The sky is clear, the sun is shining, roosters are crowing, birds are chirping. A sure sign of a good morning. The Philippines gave us a few surprises in the last episode. But in the end, it was magical. This morning, my great-grandmother gave us delicious rice cake that she baked. It's called nilatikan or latik in Pangasinan. It is a type of rice cake with a caramel sauce made with coconut cream and molasses. The sticky rice is cooked with coconut cream and sugar and a dash of salt in a thick iron pan, usually over a wood fire. Caramel sauce is then added and baked on banana leaves in a primitive oven. Top and bottom are charcoal fired. It takes a lot of patience to make this incredible and delicious rice cake. After breakfast, Borya decided to make a kite out of leftover bamboo. It would be fun for the children, especially for the boys. Местно в магазине купили леску, клей, такие нитки и пластиковые пакеты. Еще и скотч. Идем запускать воздушного змея. Собрались уже тут несколько детей. The next day, they went looking for a place to fly a kite. A narrow road leads to a small community called Sitio Logolog. Besides the beautiful greenery, it has a very peaceful and quiet atmosphere. Filipino cows are basking in the sun and living their best lives. They found a good spot and an empty rice field and started to prepare their kite for its first flight. The tail of the kite was too light and was not totally predictable. Bori decided to fix it in the field with some materials that were at hand. Not far away, there was a small river. On its banks grows a lot of nipa. He's going to tie some of its leaves to the tail of their kite. Flying. The kite began to fly much better, but didn't want to stay in the air for long. The wind wasn't as strong as they wanted it to be. After a few tries, they gave up and decided to continue their walk. They headed toward the small dam that farmers use to irrigate their fields. On the way, their attention was caught by this beautiful Spanish-style house. It appears to be abandoned. Not picture. Why? Продолжаем искать место для запуска воздушного змея, но никак не найдем. Или много деревьев, или какие-то старые дома, которые филиппинцы боятся. И говорят, то ли там духи живут, их нельзя даже фотографировать, снимать. The national animal of the Philippines is the carabao or kalabao in Tagalog. It is the Filipino farmer's best friend in the rice field. The carabao symbolizes the hard work and perseverance of the Filipinos. The rice fields are mesmerizing with the rich green color. 
Next to the field, Boya noticed concrete canals that supply water for irrigation. Very happy people live here. Mama and Boya love the turon we had a few days ago. So today, I decided to make it. You'll need saba or cardava bananas, spring roll wrapper, sugar, preferably brown, and oil for frying. It's important to note that not all varieties of bananas can be cooked. Some taste good when eaten ripe, but not as satisfying when cooked. Cut bananas should be dipped in sugar and wrapped in thin spring roll wrappers. Charlene helps too. She told us her story about how she used to work making turon for a neighbor and selling it on the side of the road. They paid her 20 pesos for a whole day. My mother saw her selling turon and told her to stop working there and just accompany her to her house. She feeds her and sometimes gives her money. After all the bananas are wrapped, they need to be fried until golden brown. Sakto po punta kami bayan bukas. Bili na lang ha. I also made a juice with ice. A cold drink, perfect for hot summer weather. Sa <laughs> Boryu was impressed by their morning walk. He was reminded of the old abandoned Spanish style house. He wondered if we could try to buy it in the future and restore it. After our snack, 
Warya got behind the wheel of Willie's tricycle and we headed back to the old house to get a better look at it. We asked the locals about the house and if we could take pictures and videos. They said that this house belonged to a wealthy family but they had moved elsewhere. From the outside, this house looks fine but if you look closely, the wooden structures are already rotted from the inside. You can see the faint lines a sign of one of the most destructive pests in the world, termites. Termite damage is more common in the Philippines than fire and flood damage. Tropical conditions and high humidity encourage termite populations. They don't have this problem in Russia, so wooden houses can last for over a hundred years. Inside the house, some pieces of furniture, photographs, and religious figures are still preserved, as if frozen in time. Termites ate the house, and in some places, the floor can be seen up to the first floor. The floor on the upper terrace is lined with bamboo, but it is scary to walk on. Many of the beams are already rotted and it could collapse. Be careful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on the first floor, many of the balusters are ruined. Could it be the consequences of strong earthquakes? We can look at the structure of these decorative elements. The outer ceramic shells is covered with glaze. The inside of the baluster is filled with cement mortar and reinforced with metal rod, which is also ruined by time. He wondered how long this house has stood and who built it. Spaniards or Filipinos? What stories and secrets do these old walls hold? After taking a closer look at the house, he decided that its restoration would most likely not be justified because almost all the wooden elements would have to be replaced. Every afternoon, the neighborhood kids gather to play outside. Milk caps also known as Pogs, is a children's game played with flat round cardboard chips. Players make a stack of these milk caps and take turns hitting them with another. Each player keeps all the face-up chips and the face-down chips are stacked anew, repeating this process until none fall face down. The player who collects most milk caps wins the game. This game was popular in Russia in the late 90s. Watching the gambling Filipino kids, it was like he was transported back in time to 25 or 30 years ago. For dinner, we will be making pinakbet. This is a healthy Filipino dish consisting of mixed vegetables such as eggplant, ampalaya, squash, okra, and beans. We will also have fried rabbit fish. This fish is expensive in some parts of the Philippines. But here, we bought it for 180 pesos per kilo. 
It smells like the ocean. Before sunset, the Situ took Borea to a place called Amira Hills. From here, you have a beautiful view of Barangay Pangaskasan, Kabalitian Island, and the Endless Sea. Our stay in Pangasinan is coming to an end. It has been very good so far. I am very happy that Mama and Borya met my family. They are glad too. But we're wondering what's next. There are over 7,000 islands in the Philippines. There are so many places to explore. We don't know what difficulties we will encounter on our next adventures. But there is a saying, you never know unless you try. In the next episode, we will spend our last days in Pangasinan.